Today, I'm gonna to show you a scripting language called Auto IT that I've been using for years. It's designed for IT professionals and it's gonna save you hours. Stay tuned. Today we're going to be looking at a program called Auto IT. This program was designed for computer professionals and it's a simple scripting language that uses real similar to basic and it just helps you make scripts to kind of ease your workflow in working on computers. Um, let you script repetitive tasks and things of that nature. I have to preface this video to say that I am not a programmer. I am, I'm what you would call a Googler. Um, I've been able to use this program to write some scripts that have helped me for years in working on computers and especially automating tasks and things like that it has helped me save just thousands of hours. So um, this is a really powerful program. It can do a lot of things. I haven't even scratched the surface at the things that it can do, but I'm going to show you a couple examples today and kind of show you what the program is all about. So to get started, what we need to do is open up the script editor here. And in the script editor, this is where we will write our scripts. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to make a simple little message box. So just a little message box that pops up and tells you something. So to start out with, we have to include the function for the message box. So to do that, we're going to hit include and then the message box function. So don't take what I'm doing here as the right way to do any of this because there's probably a better way to do it, but it has worked for me. And this is just a simple little example here. So what we do is first we've added the function that we need to use. We want a message box and now we're going to write the message box real quick. So we go message box and then the first section just is telling it what kind of message, message box you want to use. Do you want to use an alert that has a little exclamation point? Or if you want to just a basic message box with an OK button? Um, there's several different options you can use here. I would Google this function so you can know all the different options that are available. I'm just going to do a simple little OK message box. And to do that, we go dollar sign, then MB underscore OK. And then the second variable here is going to be the title of the message box. So let's write subscribe. Then the third variable is going to be the actual text that's inside the message box. So for that, we're going to put like this video and subscribe to my channel. All right, so there's our message box. And then at the end, we just type exit at the end of the script. All right, so now what we have to do is save the script. So we're gonna go hit the save button, go to our desktop here, and we're just gonna type message box. All right, so we go up to the top here, we go to tools and we hit go, and that's it. Just shows a simple little message box. Subscribe, like this video and subscribe to my channel. That's good advice. I would definitely follow it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how you can make this useful because obviously if auto IT isn't installed on the computer you're using this on, this script is worthless. You can't actually use it. So what we're gonna do is go up to tools and we're gonna hit compile. And then what it does is it compiles an actual executable right here that'll run on any computers. So now we click on the executable and there you go. Subscribe, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Again, great advice. I would highly recommend it. So we'll hit OK. All right. So there you go. An easy little script that just displays a message box and you can compile it into an executable so you can run it on any computer. So now let's look at something that's actually useful. So what we're going to do is I'm going to open up a script that I use on practically a daily basis. All right. So this script right here, it's if you I did a video a while back that gives 10 different 
fixes for the 100% disk usage in Windows 10. Now, a few of those hacks for Windows 10 actually improve performance. So what I've done is several of those I've actually put into a script that will actually apply those hacks for me so I don't have to go through and do each one individually. Um, this has a few of those hacks in it as well as some other things too. All right, so I'm gonna run this script real quick to kinda show you what it looks like. So we hit tools and hit go. First thing this script does is ask for administrator rights because many of the things that it does requires administrator rights. So we hit yes and here's the GUI right here. So this gives you a progress bar. It gives you a selection right here for the different hacks that you want to perform. You may not want to perform these on every computer, so you can uncheck the ones you don't want to perform. Um, I have a little logo right here, which is more of an ego thing than anything else. And then I have a button that says do it. So when you hit the button, so I'm going to uncheck all these right here. So when you hit the button, it goes through the progress bar. It does all of them. And it says all done. Really simple little script. Okay, so the way I put this together is right here, these are your functions that give you the GUI itself. Then the first, the first thing here is require admin. So what this does is it prompts for admin rights. So that's a requirement. If you didn't have that there, you would actually have to right click on it and hit run as administrator every time because it, would, it wouldn't, just simply wouldn't work if you didn't run it as administrator. And so it, Quests admin rights. So then right here, this creates the GUI itself. And it simply has a title right here saying Cyber CPU Windows 10 tweaks. And then these variables at the end just give you the size of your window. So you can change these variables if you want the window wider or taller. Okay, then the next the next command right here actually creates that picture that was on there. Um, you can only use a JPEG. I've tried using PNGs before with a translucent background and it simply doesn't work, um, which is unfortunate because if there's a different color scheme on whatever version of Windows you happen to be working on, the picture looks all messed up. So, but you know, it is what it is. So these variables here just allow you to specify the dimensions and the location of the picture itself. Okay, so now these are the checkboxes right here. Now these checkboxes, the first one actually is the label at the very beginning. Let me open the program up right here so you can see it while we're talking about this. So right here, it's GUI create, create label, and it just says performance tweaks. That's right here, it just says performance tweaks. All that is is a label to tell you what's underneath it. And then these variables right here are not only the position of the label, but also the size of the label. You can make the label um, take up more space if you wanted to, be longer or shorter, and where you want it within the GUI. Um, then these right here, these are the checkboxes. So the GUI, GUI control create checkbox is the checkbox itself, and then this is the the text that goes behind the checkbox, and then these variables are the location and size of the checkbox itself. And then this next one, GUI, GUI control set state, just sets whether or not you want the checkbox checked or unchecked by default. All of these are checked, so it just says negative one for checked. And then um, if you want it to not be checked, you just make it negative zero. And so then we go down, this is the button, and the label on the button just says do it. You can put whatever label you want on it. And again, these variables right here control the size of the button and the position of the button on the GUI. And then right here, here's the progress bar. So the progress bar's title is progress. Um, the location of the check bar within the GUI. And then the size of the of the progress bar right here. Okay, so right here what I did is I'm always adding and subtracting stuff from this GUI. So what I did is I created a a deep a deep progress basically and all this is is the progress bar is kind of hokey how it works. Um, in this case you have four different selections. So every time it runs a selection it you just take the amount of 100 and divide it by 4 and that gives you 25 so it moves at 25 points for each time it runs a function so it's um, just a simple little progress bar so then we go down here and this is actually where the magic in the program happens this is where it runs each one of the 
different functions that we want it to do. So what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna add something to this just to kind of show you how it can be modified. So what I'll do is first thing we wanna do is close the program itself. So I'm gonna change the progress bar to 20 because we're gonna be adding another function to it. So to make it simple, I'm just gonna copy this right here. I'm gonna make another line and paste. And then right here, I'm going to put disable Windows Search. Now, Windows Search, this one is one you want to be careful with. You don't necessarily want to disable this unless you have to because it disables Windows uh, file history. So if um, a customer happens to be using the stock Windows 10 backup, this will make it not function anymore. So the first thing you want to do is change the location. You don't want this checkbox to be sitting on top of the checkbox that you just copied. So for 135, I'm going to change this to 155. And then this one I don't want to be by default checked, so I'm gonna change that to zero. So, and I'm also gonna change this to file five. So we go up to tools here, we hit go, and you'll be able to see, now we have a new one that by default is unchecked. So now to actually have that one do something, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll down here, and all I have these things doing is running scripts. And these scripts I have in a just a data folder. So the scripts I can actually run by themselves if I want to. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the function from right above and we're just going to copy and paste this right here because basically we're doing the same thing. We just have to tweak it a little bit to fit our needs. So we're going to copy this. We start at if and, and at end if. So we're going to copy this right here. And we're going to paste it again and right here all this does is first off right here what we'll do is we called the Windows search um, file 5 so we got to change that to file 5 um, this right here is just the note but I'll change it to 5 and then this is the actual command that's being run right here it's it's underscore run DOS and the path to the bat file that's going to be ran so we're going to change the name of this bat file instead of sys main we're going to call it search bat and then from there we have to actually create the bat file itself so let's go and do that so i'm going to minimize this i'm going to open my auto it folder go into data and these are the actual scripts that are running so sysmain that's the one that we just copied so i'm going to hit copy and paste real quick i'm going to rename this to search and so this is actually going to be the bat file that's going to run when that checkbox is checked. So we want to edit this. And all this does is disable the service itself. So first thing we want to do is find out what the name of the service is. So what we're going to do is type services. Go into here and we want to scroll down until we find... Windows search. Okay, so the name of this the name of the service is W search. We're going to copy that, close these boxes, and just simply highlight this and paste W search over the top of it. And hit file save. And I don't recall now, let me check again real quick if I have that disabled or not. So I'm going to scroll down to Windows search. Okay, as you can see from here, it's actually running right now. It's automatic. It's it's running right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to test our script here. Here, hit tools and hit go. It's going to ask for administrator access. We hit yes. And I'm going to uncheck all of these and we're just going to check disable Windows search because that's the one we just did. We're going to hit do it. It goes through. We're going to hit OK. So now we're going to go and check our services right here and we're going to scroll down to Windows search and there we go it's disabled so basically this program is just a really easy way to automate the things that you do on a normal basis if you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again it's really easy just to write a script that'll just do it for you so 
that gives you some examples of what you can use auto IT for. Basically, it's just a scripting language that will allow you to automate things that you're doing all the time anyway. So if you find yourself doing a lot of repetitive things and you want to find a way to automate them, this is the best way to do it. I highly recommend using this program. I've used it for years and it, like I said, it has saved me thousands of hours. Um, it's, it's just simply setting up windows. You know, I have a script that I wrote a while back that adds customizations that I do when I build a new computer. It changes the OEM info, so it puts all of my support information and things like that in. It copies a default theme to the customer's computer so I can have my own custom background and things of that nature, as well as changing other you know settings within the computer and I've been using that for a really long time and it has just been a godsend in how much it helps me um, save time while I'm working on computers so anyway if this has helped you then please like this video and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos you know like the message here says like this video and subscribe to my channel thanks again so, battery's dying. That's awesome. If you click on that executable, it says unable to open the script file. That's awesome. All right, clearly I did something wrong here. Well, I really messed this up, didn't I?